What's going on viewers? It's Sunday and I'm going to do a quick video now. The reason I'm doing this video, um, I had made a, I will put a link in the description to the original video for this 2016 Jeep Cherokee 3.2 liter, okay, VIN S, all wheel drive, limited. This had come in for a cam sensor problem on bank one. And it was a pin fitment issue. If, um, so to get the back history on it, just go to the video in the link. And um, you'll be able to get up to speed as to why I'm making this video. Now, the reason I'm making this video is one of my viewers had, had asked about the cam sensor. He had never seen a four-wire cam sensor before. And he wanted me to... Uh, I think his name is Ivan Dango. Forgive me if I didn't pronounce that right. But he had asked me, um, or I had told him a while ago, now this is a few months ago, that I was going to make a follow-up video explaining these cam sensors on this vehicle um, and why they are for wire. <clears throat> so that's what we're going to do. Um, now, these, let's start off by looking at the wiring diagram, okay? So we're going to pull up a wiring diagram for this 3.2 liter. And we're going to look at these cam sensors real quick. Because there are two of them. And if you look, okay, so here, here we've got our cam sensor 2. And here we have cam sensor 1, okay? Um, the one that was throwing the codes was this one, our cam sensor one okay rear of left cylinder head was it one or two i can't remember it doesn't really matter okay so we're going to talk about why these cam sensors are four wire um a typical cam sensor um, that he's probably used to will have your five volt supply it will have your ground or your low ref is as it's called and then it'll have its signal wire. So three wires, right? So if we look here, the reason our cam sensors have four wires is because each cam sensor has two signals. Okay, so there's two, basically there's two cam, instead of having two cam sensors, one for the intake and one for the exhaust, because this is a dual overhead cam um, V6 platform, instead of having two different cam sensors, you know, each with their own signal, their own 5-volt ref, and their own ground, or low ref, if you will. Um, what they've done is they've made one cam sensor with two signals. One for, the one for um, you know, one Hall Effect. These are Hall Effect sensors. One Hall Effect is, you know, picking up the signal for the exhaust cam. Um, and then the other Hall effect built into that sensor is picking up the signal for the intake cam. So one sensor picking up both cams position. And then of course these input signals are going to come down and go right to our PCM. Okay. So that it, it knows the positions of the exhaust in the intake cam for each bank. Okay. If we look, they, um, the right bank and the left bank, or bank one, bank two, cam sensors are sharing their low reference, okay, right here at the splice point, and they are sharing their five volt reference, okay. And you can see that here at this splice point, okay. But they cannot share their signals, of course, because that has to be unique so that the, the PCM knows the position of bank two's exhaust cam bank two's intake cam, bank one's intake cam, and bank one's exhaust cam um, due to the variable valve timing. So let's go into the service manual. They don't give you very much, but this will be a short video, and I'm hoping that, uh, let's see, engine mechanical, I'm hoping this will be helpful for him. So if we go... Um, where I found, um, let's just go into our fuel system. Okay, fuel delivery gas. 
fuel injection gas. Because our cam sensors drive the train on fuel injection timing, I want to go in here. And you'll see sensor camshaft position. And here it gives you a description. Okay, So it's showing you um, the sensor bolt and the sensor. right? The camshaft position sensor is mounted on the left side of the cylinder block at the rear of the engine. It is positioned to read the tone wheel mounted on the rear of the crankshaft. Um, or I'm sorry, am I in crankshaft? Yes, I am. I want to go into cam sensor. Why is it not showing it? Fuel delivery, maybe? Okay, I'm in the wrong spot. I apologize. Hold on. We need to go to... Where was it? Uh, I could have swore I was in fuel system. Engine performance. Ignition system. Service information. Okay. Operation. Okay. The crankshaft position sensor and camshaft position sensor. Now, you see how they say camshaft position sensor as if there's only one? Of course, we know there are two, right? But let's read this. The crankshaft position sensor and camshaft position sensor are Hall effect devices. So they're Hall effect sensors. The camshaft position sensor and crankshaft position sensor generate square wave pulses that are inputs to the PCM. The PCM determines engine position from these sensors. The PCM calculates injector sequence and ignition timing from crankshaft and camshaft position. Okay. Um, again, there's not much in here, but we can read it. Sensor camshaft position. Description. It's not a diesel. All right. They're showing you the sensor. Okay. Now I'm going to show you a different picture because this sensor is a little bit different because it's going to have two hull effects coming off either side of it, and I'll show you that. Um, the cam, the camshaft position sensor is a hull effect type sensor and is used by the PCM in conjunction with your crankshaft sensor um, and top dead center signal to recognize the position of the cylinders and determine the injection and ignition point. The cam sensor is located on the camshaft bearing housing and faces the camshaft. Okay, operation. The current carrying semiconductor layer immersed in the normal magnetic field forces lines at right angles to, di to current direction, generates a potential difference known as Hall effect, known as Hall voltage at its terminals. If current intensity remains constant, the generated voltage depends on magnetic field intensity alone. Periodic changes in magnetic field intensity are sufficient to generate a modulated electrical signal with frequency proportional to the speed of the magnetic field change. The distance between the sensor and the surface of the tone, the timing wheel on the cam axis is altered to produce this change. Okay, <clears throat> that's about as far as it's going to give us. Now, let me go in, um, and I'm not going to go into too much depth on the operation of a Hall effect sensor, mainly because, one, I'm not as good at explaining that, but if you go in my description below, I've linked, uh, I put a link to a very awesome video put out by a very awesome YouTuber named Daniel Sullivan. The guy's super smart, okay? And he's got a great video with visuals and a great explanation of how a Hall Effect sensor works, guys. So I encourage you to go watch that so that you understand the basics of how a Hall Effect produces this signal using a transistor, okay? Um, because he does a great job of it with awesome drawing capabilities. So Daniel Sullivan, um, really good guy, awesome videos. Definitely check him out. Okay, so where we can go if we want to see these tone rate, um, basically how this is set up is I'm going to go into engine mechanical and I'm going to go into mechanical, okay? And I'm going to look at service information for this engine. And what I want to look at is I want to look at um, cylinder head, okay? And then what we're going to look at is the camshaft. And we're going to look at description. And this is the picture that I want to show you guys. Dual overhead camshaft configuration, all right? It's going to be the same for both banks. Right here, on this side right here, <clears throat> okay, this is... 
on this side, I'm sorry, this is this would be the back side where our camshaft sensor, okay, this is our camshaft sensor right here on the back side. This would be front side where our phasers are mounted, right? Uh, or, um, I'm sorry, where this is the front side of the cams. This is the back side, okay, because it's on the back side, transaxle side. Here's our camshaft sensor. Now, if you look, you'll see that this cam sensor is this is a magnetic wheel that is pressed onto our camshaft right this would be the intake i'd imagine this would be our exhaust if i'm correct here but it doesn't really matter they both have magnetic wheels that are pressed onto them and um this is where the hall effect the the two hall effect sensors are you can see one's on that side of the sensor and one's on that side of this side of the sensor so that's why we have a four wire cam sensor we have a five volt reference that is going to be shared by both hall effects okay so both hall effects are going to share that five volt reference okay and then they're going to have they're both going to share the low reference and then each one will have their own signal wire okay Again, go watch Daniel Sullivan's video. He explains how that works. And he also explains how these magnetic um, tone wheels essentially vary the voltage to create that square wave that we would see if we were to scope out each signal wire for these, these cam sensors, okay? Um, <clears throat> I think there's a little bit more in this description. Um, let's take a look. So the Penstar engine uses a dual overhead cam configuration. The camshafts are a nodular cast iron design. Each camshaft has a pressed on magnetic timing wheel that is magnetically encoded. Okay. And that's in Daniel Sullivan's video. He talks about this magnetically encoded, meaning it's this tone wheel. These tone wheels will have... Um, they're going to change that magnetic field and that varying volt, that varying voltage change is what creates our signals. Okay. And that's how it determines the position of our intake cam versus our exhaust cam. Okay. With one sensor, but essentially that one sensor is two sensors in one, if that makes sense. So the two camshaft position sensors are located between the timing wheels attached to the rear of the right exhaust camshaft okay attached to the rear of the right exhaust camshaft is a centrifuge which is part of the crankcase ventilation system the centrifuge is used to separate oil droplets from the crankcase pcb valve four bearing journals okay so um let's go into operation here here is a nice picture okay and you can see this would be exhaust side here and then yes so here's our two phasers right and then here's our what would be our secondary chain setup so sometimes in order and then of course our cam sensor would be back here so sometimes in order for you to see this stuff the best place to go guys is to engine mechanical and actually look at you know if you were going to remove this okay so, for example, if you had questions on, you know, how the timing system is set up in this, um, we could go to valve timing and chain and sprocket timing and look at, oh, I don't know why I just timed out. Hold on. All right, let's try that again. So, if we go back into chain and sprockets timing, we look at, we'll just go at installation. All right, so here again, it's showing you the magnetic timing wheels, okay? On both, you can see here, this one, I think this is what they're talking about for that um, PCV system on the back of this exhaust cam, okay? But here's our tone rings, okay? And then, of course, our cam sensor would sit in the middle here with those two hall effects reading the, the um, not tone rings, but the magnetic... Um, rings magnetic timing wheels right so that's kind of cool 
the magnetic timing wheels must not come in contact with magnets, pickup tools, trays, etc., or any other strong magnetic field. This will destroy the timing wheel's ability to correctly relay camshaft position to the camshaft position sensor. Okay, so here, you know, they're showing you, you know, all the, basically how this timing system is set up, which is nice, because then, you know, if you're trying to understand how everything's timed and how everything's working, this is where I would go um, so that I get a better understanding of it, okay? You can see that essentially we've got a primary timing chain that times our crank to this idler gear, and then this idler gear, there is going to be a another chain, a secondary chain, that is going to let's see if I can get a good exploded view here. Yeah, see, so you're going to have one secondary chain that's going to run one bank, and another one that's going to run the other bank. That's these are going to go up to the phasers, okay? And this is your primary, so your crank is timed to this idler, which is time, uh, and then of course you have these chains that are going to be timed to the cams, okay? So that's essentially it in a nutshell guys i don't want to get too crazy with it but i just wanted to show you guys or uh explain that for ivan um and i hope i did a good enough job of that again so that's why we're why we have a four wire cam sensor so if you have any questions drop them down hope you enjoy the video thanks for watching guys catch you on the next one oh don't forget Go check out Daniel Sullivan's video. Very informative, very awesome, good review. Um, even if you think you have the stuff down, the guy does a very good job of breaking this stuff down. And check out all his other videos too. They're super informative. So thanks for watching, guys.